Maybe you're thinking of upgrading your Mac with the rumored Big Navi graphics card. Since you already dual boot your system into Windows for gaming, maybe you think it'll be better than Nvidia's flagship, the RTX 2080 Ti. Maybe you think you should wait to upgrade. I'm here to explain to you why the rumored Big Navi to be announced will lose against Nvidia. AMD has been rolling out RDNA 1.0 or Gen 1 Navi in the RX 5000 series of GPUs. We have the RX 5500, 5600, and 5700. People are hoping the RX 5950 will be coming out soon as the reported Nvidia killer that will defeat Nvidia's RTX flagship model. If they try with RDNA 1.0, then they will come up short and lose. AMD was not able to get first generation of Navi efficient enough to build a large enough die to take on Nvidia's RTX flagship. If they make an RX 5950 using RDNA 1.0, then they would likely be in a region of about 56 compute units as they can not make a die much larger than about 331 millimeters squared as in the Radeon 7. This would make it 25 to 30 percent better than a Radeon 7 and that would place it within striking distance of the RTX 2080 Ti. Why can't they make the die much larger? Thermals. Even at just 331 millimeters squared it will consume lots of power and have a high TDP of 300 watts just like the Radeon 7 and the Vega 64 before it. And we know how much people love of those cards. Also, the RTX 2080 Ti has been out since August of 2018, and Nvidia has not been sitting idly by. They have a rumored RTX 3080 that will be slightly better in performance than the RTX 2080 Ti. It also means that an RTX 3080 Ti is close to release. I predict that AMD will announce their biggest Navi to date, and it will be 25 to 30 percent better than a Radeon 7 for the same price point of $700. Then Nvidia will respond with the RTX 3080 that has a slightly better performance for that same $700 price point. So a Gen 1 based Big Navi will come up short in performance. It may be only 5% lower, but lower. And the biggest Navi will be a hot GPU and lose to Nvidia. Again, why is that my prediction? History. I feel like I've seen this movie over and over again. Let's take a stroll back in time, and I'll just keep it to the last decade, with the release of AMD's GCN, or Graphics Core Next. In late 2011, December 22nd to be exact, AMD released the HD7970. It was their first generation of GCN that would combine their efforts to produce compute cards and graphics cards off of one architecture. It soundly defeated Nvidia's flagship at the time, the GTX 580, which had been out for more than a year since November of 2010. Nvidia responded three months later with the GTX 680, which edged it out slightly ahead of the HD7970, and I'm talking single digit percent percentages here. As always, it really depends on the games played, but on average, the GTX 680 slightly won. Nvidia wins. Just three months later, AMD then released an overclocked version of the HD7970. They called it the HD7970 Gigahertz Edition. It wasn't a clear win, but most people would say that the two cards traded blows, and it really depended on which game you were comparing. Fast forward to February 19th of 2013, Nvidia released its first Titan card, the GTX Titan. This card placed it far ahead, think 30% ahead of AMD's HD7970 GHz edition, but it cost twice as much at $999. Nvidia wins. Three months later, in May of 2013, Nvidia released the GTX 780, which was more than 10% faster than the HD7970 GHz edition, for a more price competitive $649. Nvidia wins. But AMD was going to respond later that year with second generation of GCN or GCN 2.0. That came on October 24th of 2013 in the form of the R9 290X. It soundly defeated the GTX 780 by more than 10%, but as a reference card with a blower, it was known to be hot and loud. Nvidia responded only two weeks later. On November 7th, they released the GTX 780 Ti. This card edged out the R9 290X in performance. Nvidia wins again. AMD had no response except to try that old dual GPU die on one card trick in the form of the R9 295 times two. Dual GPUs don't work well today in most games, 
and they didn't back then either. Fast forward to September of 2014, NVIDIA released the GTX 980, increasing its lead on the R9 290X. AMD was going to respond with GCN 3.0 with the Fury architecture. That happened on June 24th of 2015 with the Fury X. The problem is, NVIDIA released the GTX 980 Ti earlier that month on June 2nd, and the Fury X was just not enough. NVIDIA wins again. For 2016, AMD targeted GCN 4.0 for the mid-tier segment of the market with the Polaris line of RX 400 series of GPUs and then refreshed them as RX 500 series in 2017. These were great cards for their segment and offered great performance at a great price. AMD was going to take on NVIDIA's high end with a GCN 5.0 and that was known as Vega. That card was so hyped up that it pushed NVIDIA to respond preemptively with the release of the GTX 1080 Ti in March of 2017. Vega was delayed. Vega never had a chance. NVIDIA wins again. So Navi was the next architecture that has been hyped and delayed and delayed and hyped. And with every release of Navi, NVIDIA has been right there, preempting them with their own release. Just look at what NVIDIA did prior to the release of the RX 5700 XT in July. They announced just days before the Super Series in the RTX 2060 Super, 2070 Super, and 2080 Super cards. And then, prior to the release of the RX 5500 XT, NVIDIA announced the GTX 1650 Super and 1660 Super cards. Finally, prior to the release of the RX 5600 XT, NVIDIA was right there to announce the price cut to the RTX 2060 non-supercard. Navi is a really good gaming architecture and a big improvement over the pitfalls of the GCN architecture, but it's not ready to take on NVIDIA's flagship. Think of it, since 2013, NVIDIA took the single GPU performance crown decisively and they have not given it up or even shown signs of letting up. NVIDIA will follow the patterns of history to stay on top. NVIDIA cares about leadership in this segment and they will fight with everything they have to keep it. They are not like Intel in the CPU side who just doesn't care about the consumer desktop CPU segment anymore. I hope AMD does not try to take them on with RDNA 1.0. It'll just create a loss of momentum for Navi. They need to get it right in RDNA 2.0 and then challenge NVIDIA later this year or into 2021. If AMD brings out Big Navi based on RDNA 1.0, then NVIDIA will respond with a 3080. NVIDIA wins again. If AMD brings out Big Navi based on RDNA 2.0, then NVIDIA will respond with a 3080 Ti. This is what I want to see. This is my last hope for Navi. They need to win at the high end. They are losing momentum. So far, the reception for the RX 5700 XT was good. The reception for the RX 5500 XT was meh to don't we already have this level of performance and price in the RX 580 and RX 590 graphics cards? It felt like we got a replacement with slightly less power draw, but that's for laptops, not desktops. The reception for the RX 5600 XT was, what the heck are you doing? They've lost momentum. I hope they don't rush a big Navi product just to lose out like the Radeon 7 and the Vega 64 before it. That would kill momentum. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying AMD doesn't offer good performance for the dollar because historically they do offer better value. I've purchased far more AMD cards than Nvidia cards. The reality is AMD has not been able to hold the top spot in almost a decade. I like rooting for the little guy and AMD is for sure the little guy compared to Nvidia. And if you include the CPU division, they have had some significant wins. I just hope they don't get too arrogant on the GPU side. They're just not there yet. That is going to do it for this one, guys. Like it if you learned something, share it with others, and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.